God, this is so cool. Each one of these stones got to be three tons, maybe more. Great. What did we just do? Well, we just bought this fish and we're going to leave it out here, which is called Azucari. Azucari for two years. And we're going to come back here with all the certified aquascape contractors in fall of 2024 and see how much bigger that fish is. So this little bump on the top of the head is how you know it's going to be a Shaquille O'Neal size fish. <laughs> build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Hey guys, so we're up here at Shintaro's main koi house. We just got back from harvesting 25 four-year-old koi. They're right in here. You gotta check these out. Massive, massive koi. These fish have been in the mud pond for about six months, and now we're gonna take all these koi, put them into the koi house, and the breeder will sort them by size. So really cool, really exciting to be part of it. Not many breeders let us do this experience with them, but we're lucky enough to do it with uh, Shintaro Koi Farm. That's Some awesome. of the best Gosanke koi in Japan. Like I said before, definitely a bucket list adventure for me. That was so cool. And thanks so much, Brian, for bringing us along. This is just so much fun. AJ, we're looking at some incredible fish here. These yeah. are Nisai? Yeah, this is Shintaro's number one Nisai pond right here. He has some incredible size on some of his two-year-old fish. And Nisai means two years. Some of these fish are over 20 inches, which is insane for a fish in that age. They have incredible color patterns already and have so much potential. These are really great candidates to uh, buy them, keep here, and grow them to get to that 26, 27 inch in one extra year. So they already have amazing potential and great genetics. So some of my favorite fish that I've seen at his far in this tank just number one in the So that's amazing to me. So we just came from the mud ponds over there and a lot of people come in here, buy these Nisai, these year and a half, two year old fish, yeah. leave them here for another two years yeah. just to grow them to get to like 60 some centimeters. Yeah, so right. they can buy a fish for a little bit less as a Nisai, pay the breeder a little bit extra to babysit, take it after the koi for that one extra year, and then they get that monster fish that they're really looking for. Some people I've not met in the last couple of weeks have left their fish in the mud pond for three or four years. Wow. And then they come out, they're over 95 centimeters. You can come out here, buy a fish, it would retail for $800 or something, and then turn that around and do like a $15,000, $20,000 fish yeah. if, if the patterns and if, everything. If the fish develops a way to reach its full potential. Not all fish are going to turn out to be that $15,000, $20,000 fish. So it's a little bit of a, a risk when you're buying it, and look, you got to look for specific things. It's brought, a, come out. brought a better investment than a lottery ticket. I would say so. <laughs> I would say so. I would, I, would, uh, I would gamble on a fish versus a lottery. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Soon we'll get these aerators off and just show you guys how incredible these fish are. I think John and I might actually buy a fish and uh, let it grow out. Always oh, happy. Always oh, it's it's happy. <laughs> so look at how amazing these are. So Tom, these are the ones you and John actually harvested uh, a few days ago, yeah, right? Yeah. yeah, two days ago. So I'm, I don't know if it, they're not all, maybe they are, I don't know. It's that one he right there. Spread them right, right below you. It's got the lopsided. Oh, oh, there it is, yeah. right there. Yeah, yeah that's a pretty awesome. fish. Tom, that's all you. all of those Nisai that AJ was talking about. A year and a half and they get them this big. These would be giant fish in any of our customers' ponds. It's just crazy. What did we just do? Well, we just bought this fish and we're gonna leave it out here, which is called? Azucari. Azucari for two years. And we're gonna come back here with all the certified aquascape contractors in fall of 2024 and see how much bigger that fish is. How much bigger do you think it's gonna be, Brian? Maybe this much more and thicker. Yeah, yeah. so it's gonna- Awesome. So this little bump on the top of the head is how you know it's gonna be a Shaquille O'Neal size fish. <laughs> so this is a four step Kohaku yeah, very nice. that we're gonna come back. Jack, John and I picked out the Sanki. Was it a Sanki? Yeah. You guys got to show no, up. No, we got to show up. And, uh, and then Tom's got the Sanki. And so that one that I was showing you before was the one that Jack, John, and I. So Good work. We've got three fish all coming back in a few years. See how much better these things will okay. look. Watch, watch this Bigger. Brian. Brian. I won't even have to tell him this and he's going to finish my words. I love my joke. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> These are all Tosai one-year-olds. Can you believe that these little guys in a year's time, year and a half time, will be the same? 
same size as those ones we just picked from the other house over there. And a lot of these are gonna be the same quality of mountain batter. There's some incredible ones in here. These are all anchos. That is so awesome. That's so awesome. I love you double dot. See the good good. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm back where I started nine hours later, and I have to say it was a rough one. <laughs> no, I actually never felt that exhausted for not sleeping at all last night, but I am pretty tired now. We're gonna go out to dinner. It was an awesome day. I think we're almost done buying all the fish. We get so, so like caught up into this like buying frenzy. And I think I've got a lot of really cool fish for our customers next year. And I've got two out of the three personal fish I wanted. I got that one extra Goshiki boy that we talked about. I still want that Shiro Utsuri. I saw one today, but it was $12,000. And I just don't think I'm ready to do that. You think I should have done it? Maybe not. All right, I'll see you guys in the morning. We're actually gonna go check out some other stuff tomorrow, the Koi Museum, maybe even a Japanese garden, which I'd be super excited about. But I'm gonna try to get a half an hour of sleep before dinner, and then I'll meet up with you guys in the morning. Bye. <laughs> So here we are at the Koi Museum. This is gonna be really cool. Kind of the history, where all these koi started from, different ponds, who knows? Like, I have no idea. Let's just go find out. See, they're getting all ready for winter. So one of the things I definitely wanted to see was more of a traditional Japanese garden. Look at, now this is a cool bridge. Look at the size of these stepping stones. That is awesome. Favorite thing about Japanese gardens is the simplicity and just the thought that goes into everything. Every rock has a purpose and a place. Very cool. Headwaters that move them through here, go this way. This stepping stone thing, I have to duplicate when I get home. Anybody that wants that, just put your comments down below. I'll make sure that happens. <laughs> Can we just keep doing what Koi yeah. do? This is where they started, and this is where they are now. Very cool. All Koi started off as really just a common cart. And then the Asagi was really the first ancient. So this is, uh, they call this Nishikigoi no Sato, which is the Nishikigoi Museum in Ojia City, um, which is part of Niigata Prefecture. Um, now, they built this um, to appreciate the industry. Um, in Ojia, especially and Nagoka, they have all the houses, they have coal on them. I mean, we'll even go past later, they've got like the subway, yeah, like the underground, you walk through a koi's mouth. So they really do appreciate the industry in this area. So, you know, the government, they realize how much money it produces for the area and how many people it employs. So they built this museum many years ago now, a long, long time ago, and it really got um, quite damaged by the earthquake, but now they've rebuilt it and they've modernized it again. But yeah, it's a fantastic place and it's a fantastic thing for the community in, in general in Japan, in the Koi area. You'll see everything in here and you can read about everything, but now they've changed it up a little bit. So it's more modern, like these fish here, these are more modern era fish. So these are sort of like, these are Dainichi Koi, the all Japan champions, and then they'll go through other varieties and stuff like that. But yeah, have a look around, it's a great place. Awesome, so what an incredible place. Just showing you kind of the lineage where all these fish came. And I'm guessing we're gonna see a pretty incredible pond here. Oh my gosh, gorgeous fish after gorgeous fish. Look at that black bottom. One of the things I've been most excited about seeing is really a Japanese garden and just the strategic placement of all the stone, the landscape, the plants, the way they all interact, the feel of it. There's something we talk about back home all the time is the mystery of design. And I remember when I saw my first pond, how much I was inspired by these ponds that I flipped through just books and how you just keep wandering. It makes you want to wander through the garden and see what's around this corner or that corner. Just so incredible. The bridges that lead to islands and the waterfalls the steps that come down to interact with the fish up close. Just massive, massive boulders. And as beautiful as this pond is without fish, nice fish can make a pond just look so much cooler. And these fish, of course, are exceptional. And the cool stepping stones coming across into the bridge that invites you to come across and just keep enjoying this pathway. What an incredible. 
incredible waterfall. We come across this pathway that comes up through here. And this again is the great part of the design, right? Pathways that lead you to discovery. You come up here, you get to see the headwaters. Oh, I could live here. Another bridge, you've heard me say it a thousand times, a bridge without a destination just doesn't make sense. And this brings us out to an island where we can look down, look at some incredible fish. Look at this waterfall back behind Greg. Beautiful gardens. Wouldn't you love to work here? Oh. Waterfalls isn't bad over there. No, that waterfall is gorgeous. And of course, this, every part of this is just amazing. So cool. What an awesome bridge. As much as I love this zigzag part, still my favorite part are these stepping stones. God, this is so cool. Each one of these stones got to be three tons, maybe more, maybe four to five tons. Our little landslides that we do, a little island rock. Well, if this isn't inspirational for you, then there's probably not too much, but I can't wait to take some of the ideas, some of these fish <laughs> that we picked out the last few days and bring this back to, back to the U.S. Can't wait to do this back home.